I'll check my Twitch messages right before. Yes, I will do coaching with you, sir. But okay, we're getting into official mode right now. So, let's start it up. Welcome, I am Winter of Winter Starcraft, which is me. That's, not very self that's pretty self-explanatory. But today I'm going to be explaining pretty much the basics of going quick three hatch in the ZVP matchup. I enlisted a giant smurf to execute some Protoss builds against me today, and I executed a few times against AI. We're going to go over those replays, really go in-depth about what the build does, why it's such a popular build in the matchup, and what are its weaknesses, what are its strengths, and how to utilize it to the best of your ability. So with that, uh, alright, Giant Smurf says he may or may not be available for a Skype conversation uh, earlier, for later in, later today. But just to start, I every I think every week or whenever I release these videos, um, I'm going to go play it versus the AI and just go over the build on the Zerg side of the matchup. So we're just going to jump right into a game of me versus the AI. We're going to go through it step by step. Uh, all the important timings that you, with complete disregard to the Protoss player, we're assuming he's Forge Fast Expanding, and that's it right now. They're timings that you should do no matter what, and that's what we're going to jump into right now with game one. Wait, game one. My game versus the <laughs> computer. So, here we go. Let's get my overlay up. Uh, did that work? Alright. So, we start off the game. We can speed right through because it's completely standard. I just want to talk a little bit uh, in slow mode about overlord positioning. Uh, your first overlord, well, on most maps. Most maps are laid out so the natural it sometimes has a cliff over it, sometimes doesn't, but the first overlord, if at all possible, you want to get in position to see at least one of the gas guys at the natural. And against Protoss, you can send your overlord directly to their natural, even if they're going for a gateway first. The soccer can't come out until about 4 minutes and 15 seconds. So if you position your overlord here to just see what he's doing, you can tell when he's getting his nexus, when he's getting his forge, uh, what timings you have to be worried for. So that first overlord just comes straight into the natural, and you send it behind so it can scout for these two death scatters. You'll see my overlord does end up around here. The next overlord, starting out on 9, usually you're going to want to send into a position that can scout. You can sacrifice it between like the 6.30 and 7 minute mark to scout his base. You see I rally my overlord on daybreak all the way around the back of his base because if he's forge fast expanding, this overlord will get in position before he can potentially have any ranged units to kill it. I like to have it here because most... Uh, Protoss players make their tech in this area of the base. Oh, day nine color. All right. Now we're just going to ignore the fact that the AI is being retarded at this point. But these first overlords are moving out. I'm getting my pool on 15. Let me just talk about some timings from Protoss right now. Actually, no. I'm going to completely ignore Protoss at this point. It's just you that we're talking about. You, the Zerg player, going for three hatch. So right now I've just moved my overlords into position. I'm getting that pool down at about two minutes. For Protoss players, for a 15 pool, it goes down between about one minute 55 seconds and two minutes five seconds. I send my 15th drone out to go take an expansion here. Uh, and that's pretty much it at this point. We're just assuming the Protoss player doesn't exist. This is just how the build works at this point. So the drone comes down. I dance around for a little bit trying to not get blocked by the probe and take the expansion on 17 supply. After that, invest in an overlord. This third overlord, it's really map specific. I like to put it somewhere where it can really see what the Protoss player is doing. And on this daybreak, for example, this cliff, you can get the overlord to this cliff by the point they could have a stalker on the field if they're going for a forge fast fan. If they are not, usually I'll send it along the back to the third base, something along those lines. But you can get creative, just download some pro replays, see what they do with their overlords, because that's sort of a little bit more specific that I'm looking to get into right now. All right, uh, after you make that overlord, then you'll have the opening to make a queen first. You should be on 15 supply, 15 supply queen, and then 17 supply, two sets of lings, bringing you up to 19. And after that, a couple drones. Just a couple things about the lings. Always keep the links active. Important parts to scout are behind your natural. Scout the probe at your third, the watchtower, and from there you gotta send your links around. Check all the places that probe could find its way into, because probes are sneaky little mother... And we all know that. We've been cannon rushed, and we're trying to avoid that as much as possible right now. Okay, 
I rally my 21st or 22nd drone down to the third base. Really the timing you're looking at taking it for the quick 3 hatch build is going to be around 4, 4.15 or so for you Protoss players. If you check over here and they don't have an expo by about 4 minutes and 45 seconds, they're probably focusing a little bit more on a 2 base play. It doesn't necessarily mean a 2 base all in, but it's probably a little bit just more focused on powering up on those 2 bases. Okay, now that I'm in 4 minutes and 30 seconds, my first queen has popped out. I've started an inject, and I'm making an overlord on about 22 supply. This is a very important overlord, because at this low drone count, you really want to get your drone count up. And if you let this, if you just make drones up to when this larva inject pops off, then you are not going to have the drone count you need. So, it, you're going to be supply blocked. So I like to make it when it's like a quarter of the way through larva injects. Something I like to do at lower leagues when I was first learning Zerg, just every time uh, you inject, think about, okay, I injected, I need to make an overlord. And that'll carry you through for a while. It's better to be way under the supply cap than to be supply blocked, especially at most times. And at about 4.30, the expansion's finishing. And what I like to do, I like to rally my drones down to my natural. You have 16 drones mining minerals. That's the most efficient saturation you're going to get. You can go up to 24 workers with mild saturation, but 16 workers is really that money count when you're on a low drone count. So why I like to rally to the natural is because the main is exposed. This is why it's really safe to make your tech. Like you'll see, I make my lair at my natural. Why? Because there, let, let's just go very quickly through things that could happen to your main in the course of a game that are much less likely to happen to your natural. Sentry drops, void ray harassment, phoenixes, DT drops, random warp ins with warp prisms when you're going for a greater spire. You make your greater spire right here, it's dead. You make your greater spire right here with 30 spine crawlers around it, it's not as dead usually. That's just some important things to note. This isn't even about three heads, it's just general zerg right now. But now this is finishing up. And pretty much, I'm just droning. For the near future, drones are everything that's going to be in it. So, uh, at this point, I'm just kind of getting my drone count up. The drone count I'm looking for is 45, maybe 50 drones before I'm making a decision. There's very few builds that uh, you have to stop droning if you're not getting supply block before 45 or so drones. Uh, past 55, you're really going to want to determine what the Protoss player is doing. But that's about the 6 minute, 6 to 30 minute, 30 second part. Minute mark. Alright, so I'm just getting my drone count up and I'll speed it up here as I get a queen. Uh, this queen uh, that pops out at about 5.30, the first queen from the natural, I get a creep tumor with it because the amount of money, you see how much money I have? 20 minerals as I get this next queen. This will mean eventually after I make a queen at the third base, I will have an extra queen for creep spread. And creep spread is very important in dealing with... Uh, huge variety of Protoss builds, whether it be Immortal Sentry, anything like that. Just having this one creep tumor and then able to lay down a creep tumor at the third, your creep spread should be pretty far out and really prevent pylon placement, allow you to get surrounds much easier, allow you to place spine crawlers more effectively, and just creep spread is good, alright? Moral of that story. So, I'm just getting my bases up. And at about 6 minutes in the completely standard build, gas geysers come down between 6 minutes 15 and 6 minutes 30. Depending on what you've scouted from the Protoss player, you can kind of vary that. But 6 minutes 15 is really a good time to look at it. And in general, getting the Roach Horn at about 6 minutes 45 seconds should leave you safe from most timings as long as you don't get supply blocked. And now you see this creep spread looking pretty good right now. It helps your rally down near third base. I just want to really go over that creep spread is a good thing. Alright? I see a lot of... Zerg players just get three queens. I'm like, all right, it's three drones. Just get another queen. Get your creep spread going. It might be kind of a personalized style thing, but I'll stand by it. All right, from here, I'm just kind of droning up, getting my Evo chamber at about seven minutes because let's assume you don't know what the Protoss player is doing. Uh, you want to have that Evo chamber up. DTs could potentially come up before them, but there are a lot of tells that DTs are coming out. So if you think DTs might be a possibility then obviously you want to get that quicker. If you think star if you've already seen a Stargate, for example, I sacrificed my first overlord. Usually I only sacrifice one overlord, especially if I've seen their gas timings and their forge timing. I'll get more into that with the games I played against Giant Smurf. But right now sacrificing that first overlord between about seven minutes, seven minutes, thirty seconds. The the path I like to take is covering this area, because most players will put their tech here or uh, somewhere in here. 
like at the top of the ramp where they have the idea that the overlord's coming in, but usually they don't expect it from this side, even if they've seen it earlier. So about 7 minutes, 7.30, you want to get that overlord in there and see what you can see. And I'll go over what I see against Giant Smurf. Uh, I, I'm not really going to go into what this uh, computer player is doing right now. But since I haven't really seen anything, the Overlord hasn't really seen anything, I get a spine crawler for safety. Who knows when a warp in could be coming in. And I start my lair at about 7.30 before using any other type of gas. Because in the very standard build, as you start your lair, you get your third gas before anything else, any upgrades. That way you have the option to get roach speed very quickly. You can have roach speed to deal with immortal sentry all in. You can potentially get your infestation pit or your spire for your lair tech. If that's what you want to deal with. If it's a blink all in, then you can get burrow. Uh, but... As for now, the standard lair timing, if you're not feeling any early aggression coming on, you've scouted no early aggression, about 7 minutes and 30 seconds. So just work that out, time it out, get your gas geysers in time, and make sure you're mining from them. And 7 minutes and 30 is a good time. And no later than 8 minutes and 30 seconds unless you're sure that it's a gateway all-in coming in. Because if you're trying to deal with any timings that have anything higher than gateway tech on your hatch tech, you're probably going to have a bad time. All right, from here... I just get an extra gas geyser, I start to drone up some more, and there's not much more to gain from this game. My nuts upgrade is Zergling Speed, which is a very safe upgrade to get, and then I like to get plus one on the Zerglings, because Zerglings are very versatile, even against Immortal Sentry or anything else that's Zealot Heavy. You can do a lot of damage with those Zerglings, because they're very mobile. I like to invest in mobile units. If your style is kind of be a little bit more turtly, maybe go for the plus one Carapace, or go for a plus one Roach Attack, because they obviously don't move as quickly. But that's kind of a personal option is getting that upgrade. It's not always getting the plus one melee attack. So, just some things to gain from that game. Uh, 15 pool, 15 hatch, queen on 17, taking your third base by 4 minutes, 4 minutes and 30 seconds, sending the first lings out to scout for the probe. Do not stop until you see that probe. And... If you don't know where the probe is, always keep a ling on patrol around your third base so it covers like the mineral line and the front of it so you'll know if a pylon is going up to make cannons. Just some basic things. The first queen from your natural, use for a creep tumor, and then moves down to the third, makes another creep tumor as you make another queen at your natural for injects. Gas, 6 minutes and 15 seconds. Roachmorn, assuming you haven't scouted anything like a stargate, uh, about 6 minutes and 30, 6 minutes and 40 seconds is safe. Uh, Evo Chamber, standard time is about 7 minutes. Lair, first 100 gas will go to it about 7 minutes and 30 seconds, uh, up to 8 minutes, and usually no later than 8.30 or 9 minutes, depending on if you want to get upgrades earlier or something like that. It's kind of a personalized thing, but it's also kind of a standby as well. And pretty much from that, we're going to go into what the Protoss player is doing, how you need to react to that. I enlisted a Giant Smurf, a Grandmaster's level Protoss player from Team Monomaniac Esports. Uh, you can find them at monoesports.com. And I had him do some very standard Protoss builds against me. So we're going to start out uh, with a very standard expansion build that transitions into a macro game. <laughs> Alright, uh, we started playing on Daybreak. This is... Uh, a Giant Smurf did a Robo Expand, which is a very safe build. It can look like an Immortal Sentry build, but there are some specific tells that... Well, I mean, he makes it kind of obvious in this game, but there's some specific tells that you're looking for. We're going to skip right to it. He does a Nexus first. He tries to block everything. We're going to go right more into scouting what the Protoss player is doing, more opposed to what you're doing, because we've already gone over the uh, build itself. Just some things to note on this map. The Overlord can come in, it can scout for the Forge until the Cyber Core is finishing up because at that point you might be threatened by a Stalker, but if you want to keep your Overlord by the Forge and then move it to go scout for a second gas, that's sometimes what you want to do because then you can see the Forge timing. I like to use Lynx for it, it's a little bit safer, but uh, at this point I'm just making my Lynx and scouting for the Probe while he gets his infrastructure up. Completely standard. He didn't really block my hatch because he wanted to go for that Nexus first. I come in, I make a little bit of a sloppy move with the Overlord, but... We're going to slow it down at this point. He's taking two gas geysers, and another benefit of taking the Overlord on this pathing behind is that you can scout for the gas geysers. See, like, if he's only taking one gas geyser, and then you scout at the natural, he's only taking one, that could mean an extremely heavy gateway on. If he only has one gas geyser mining by five minutes, and you have the two gas geysers natural scouted, that is almost certainly a heavy gateway all in because that's the only thing that can utilize that small amount of gas. It's usually a zealot build, but... At this point, I scout around for the probe, 
And the pro being really sneaky back here. Uh. And right now, the things I'm looking for... Alright, this is a very important timing. His cyber core is finishing up. There are some things that I need to be scouting for. Of course, I'm not scouting for them. But on maps like Cloud Kingdom... Uh, not Ohana. Cloud Kingdom, and what other maps? Do you have a cliff over the top? Well, at least Cloud Kingdom, if you can scout the Forge, if you see the Cyber Core is finishing and he starts plus one before the Cyber Core finishes, that could indicate a gateway all in because he's utilizing his gas so early for investing in those ground units. That means he's probably going to want to do an early attack. Whereas if he gets the Cyber Core and starts Warp Gate first, it could. M it's more likely to be a heavier tech build as if he's not investing in that earlier, if he invests in it later, that means he's investing in a later game. Alright, so right now, uh, I have it, let's, let's assume I have a Ling here scouting, I think, yeah, my Ling comes up and it'll see that the Cyber Core, the Cyber Core with a standard time, he usually finishes around 5.30, 5.40. And with a, if it's not being chrono boosted, it takes almost three minutes. Of course, warp gate research is 160 seconds, so we'll just say, for the sake of argument, about two minutes after the cyber core finishes is when maybe you could be threatened by warp gate. So if you can get a bead on when the cyber core is finishing, well, a cyber core takes about 55 seconds to build. So a good rule of thumb I like to use is within three minutes of the cyber core starting or the gateway finishing, I guess you could say, because the cyber core finishes pretty quickly afterwards. Within three minutes of the cyber core starting, you should be prepared to scout, at least scout for a gateway attack. And if you haven't determined whether or not it's a gateway attack, then you should have at least some cursory defenses prepared. Alright, now we're just going to skip through here. I'm being a little bit long-winded, but as each game goes on, I'm going to be explaining more and more basic stuff each time. So we'll be more into what, uh, more specifically, Giant Smurf is doing in each of the games. So right now you see I'm doing my standard build. I got the creep tumor at the natural. I'm moving down to the third to lay down a creep tumor here as well. And I'm about to move this overlord in. And very important, I scout that he is going for plus one upgrades and that he is getting the gas geysers before seven minutes. An immortal sentry all in and immortal sentry expansion, they both, well, unless they're doing a gateway pressure beforehand, but I'll go into that. It requires you to get your gas geysers before the 7 minute mark, usually before the 6.30 minute mark. And you can see here, he started these at about 6 minutes and 30 seconds. So having this overlord here allows me to see, okay, I've seen he's upgrading plus 1. If you see the forge is upgrading, and you see he's taking his two gas geysers down here, you can rule out several things. One thing that you can usually rule out, but not all of the time, is quick DTs. Because you really need that gas uh, in order to go quick DTs. And another thing... I can also use to rule it out is whether he has a sentry early, because if he's going for plus one, a sentry, and gas at this timing, which is not especially quick, uh, then the DTs will not be very, uh, they will not be coming in quicker than a standard evil chamber timing. That's why the evil chamber is timed out when it uh, is, because that way you'll have a spore crawler just standard in time. But if he's going for gas gadgets much quicker, if he's not getting plus one, if, for example, he gets just a couple zealots out of this gateway and he doesn't get a stalker and he doesn't get a sentry then that can kind of be a tell for DTs. Alright, so at this point uh, I'm at about seven minutes. I've seen he's moved out with a zealot but he hasn't really pressured me with it. He still has a probe on the map so that was kind of sloppy not killing that. And right now what I'm looking for, I'm going to sacrifice my overlord. At, at this point I don't know what's going on. That's why I got my roach worn a little bit early. Uh, but I mean, I, I, I delayed it a bit. You can see here it's only like 16 seconds. I got it at 7 minutes because I saw that the assimilators were created before 6 minutes and 30 seconds, which means he can't really execute a heavy gateway on, which means, in turn, I do not need my roach one that early. If you're not sure uh, what time he started his gas gadgets, like maybe you haven't looked over at the Overlord yet for a while, getting that roach one about 6.45 is just something you might want to invest in doing. Uh, I'm going to change my music a second as much as I like the Zerg theme. Alright, so I'm bringing my Overlord in here, and this is all I needed to see. What I see right now... Wait, where's my vision? Well, let's go back just a couple seconds to what my Overlord saw exactly. Hmm, I made a mistake here. 
I should have poked in to see if there was Chrono Boost on the Nexus. But right now, seeing this Robo this early, I know there can't be any other gates. There's just a couple gates put down behind it. But knowing that this Robo this early, this tells me a couple things. I can drone because this Robo won't be threatening for at least a minute or two. And right now, uh, I should have checked in. If he was, I saw he was Chrono Boosting probes, that would have kind of led me to think, huh, maybe he's going for an Expo. And you really, it's really want to determine as quickly as possible if he's going for an expo or not. So this is what I do. This is my reaction right now. I don't know. Yes. All right. I go straight to this overlord. Since it's got all the information it could possibly get, I've already seen the robotech, so I don't want to sacrifice it in the sea. I see the two gases. There's no, no other information this overlord can get. So I move it in position to see the expo. Of course, if he sent the sentries or a stalker down in order to clear it out, it wouldn't really help as much. But usually, Toss will just go for that expansion. So right now, moving this Overlord down after it gets all the intel it needs, and I actually saved this one because I've already seen the Robo, uh, putting it in position, and this allows me to see as soon as that probe goes down for the Expo, I'm kind of thinking, okay, this seems like a legitimate expansion. Of course, it might be a fake for Immortal Sentry, but it's very early. As a general rule of thumb, if they're making an expansion before 9 minutes, it's usually not a fake because the expansion will be finishing by the time the Immortal Sentry even wants to push out, which is about 9.30 to 10.30. So, it's not really a good investment to get the Expo that early. And I've already seen that he's making a pylon here. He's already invested this much in expansion, and he's making a pylon here. That already means he's really investing his defenses. He wants to get his expansion up before I can mount really a decent attack on it. And he has Robotech out to be safe. So, right now I'm thinking, okay, I am about 90% sure this is a legitimate expansion. I keep kind of scouting in, but there's one final tell that allows me to determine that this isn't a fake. And it's this Overlord over here. The Overlord scouting the third base. I will be able to see uh, that he puts down extra gateways here. And as soon as I see this, you see, as soon as a Protoss player invests this much in walling off their base, it's almost guaranteed to no longer be a fake because this is not cost efficient. Like, even if he tried to go for an all-in after this point, it would not be strong enough to even threaten me now that I have my drone count up to something very solid, my macro hatch is on the way, and I'm just going to spend a minute here, uh, we're just going to assume, well, he is at this point, going for an expansion with his Robotech. We're just going to assume a few things. He's going for an expansion, he has Robotech, he's looking to invest in Sentry Immortal for the near future. Uh, just, there's a couple options, I'm not going to go into exactly uh, what the build is, but there are a couple options as a Zerg player you have, and those options are... One, heavy roachling aggression, which is something Stefano kind of popularized earlier. Uh, the issue with this, I mean, in, in the lower leagues, it may still work. It, if you can fake it and you can kind of make it look like you're droning, you take a fourth base behind it, it can catch him off guard. This is my least favorable one. I'm not a huge fan of doing it anymore because the better toss players get at force fields, the better they get at placing their buildings, then the less effective it's going to be. Secondly, uh, mutalists. Mutalists are something I like to do when I've seen he's going for this quick of an expansion and he's going for that heavy of a sentry based defense, which means he's really going to chrono boost out the immortals, but a smart player will be able to scout it with their observers in time, uh, unless you can pick off those observers, but I still really like to have the mutalists on the map to clear the way for me getting a fourth and a fifth base. But I don't really recommend mutalists uh, unless you have a lot of experience with them because it's very easy to overmake mutalists and get caught off guard. As, as a general rule, I'm not really going to get into mutalists. But, as a general rule, you go for Mutalists until they start to stabilize. And, of course, if your Mutalists don't do any damage and they stabilize instantly, you could be in a tough spot. But, if you're smart with your Mutalists, it, they have to get they have to get Templar Tech, they have to get Blink if they want to push out. So, you can kind of use those timings to go for the Infestor Broodlar composition. And that kind of leads me into the last option. Well, of course, there are other options, but the last <coughs> generic option which is straight up macro. You go and get a fourth base, you go and get maybe even a fifth base, you go straight for infestation pit tech, you get your hive tech around 11, 11.30 with the spire, and you start going for that mass spine broodlord composition, and that's a completely viable option at this point too, because he has to fill out his tech tree if he's going for this third base. He's invested in those gateways, he's not going to have blink tech, he's not going to have colossi for a little bit now. So what you're really looking to do is make sure you can get your economy up, get 80, 90 drones with a handful of spine crawlers as your greater spire is finishing and he wants to push out and attack you. It's kind of a, it takes a while to really work out the timing. And if you watch me later, 
when I'm commentating as random, I'll kind of be going over that whenever I'm in ZVP. Shameless plug. But uh, those are the three options. But right now, I'm just kind of going over how to determine the build. So one last time, we'll just take stock of the game at the 9-minute mark. He's going for the Expo. Uh, I think I go for the fourth base, yeah. In this case, I'm really... What I've seen so far, he's done a really safe but also quick third expansion, which means his tech will be relatively quick behind it, and my drone count isn't too high, so if I invest in Mutalis, it'll be kind of iffy. Uh, so I think, and in this case, in this game, uh, I would probably go for just the straight-up macro, get another couple bases, and turtle up to Broodlords, while making sure you're always trying to keep him threatened from moving out until you're ready to receive him with your Broodlord Infestor composition. So... That's uh, three hatch against Robo Expansion. All right, we're gonna go into the next game, which is uh, just a straight up Immortal Sentry build. Straight up Immortal Sentry build on Cloud Kingdom, where uh, I do the Suppy defense. All right, jumping right into the game. This is a very strong build. This is a map where you will f encounter a lot of Immortal Sentry all-ins from relatively high-level Protoss. So. Just a couple notes on Overlords. First one I like to keep over the cliff, because then you can always scout his forge timing, at least one of the gases. The second one I bring to the back, and just sacrifice that in. Clearing out the probes. Everything's completely standard up to this point. There's nothing really different than the build uh, I saw earlier, so... Right now, yeah, just clean it up. Uh, I see, alright, here's a couple things. I see he's going for these early gas geysers a little bit earlier than before as well. So I'm already thinking, okay, it's not really a gateway timing. Uh, it could be an Immortal Sentry LN, and that's pretty much what every Zerg player wants to check off. Is it an Immortal Sentry? I don't know, no, or yes it is. And right now, I'm still at I don't know, so I have to prepare for it. Alright. And in this case, I'm just droning up extremely hard because I'm doing a very specific type of the Mortal Sentry All-In. I mean, of the Mortal Sentry All-In defense. And I sacrifice my Overlord, 7, 730. See the Robo. I see he's upgrading. And right now, there's a couple things I don't see. Uh, his Chrono Boost on his next side, so I don't know if he's expanding. But on this map, I'm kind of thinking, Ugh, he's probably going to go all-in with it. So... In this case, it's alright because of the build I'm going for. Right now, I'm droning very hard. I'm going for a very quick lair. So, I see the expansion. I see the sentry count. Right now, it, I don't really know if he's going for an expo or not yet. He does have a pretty high probe count. Uh, he's actually got two and four in gas. That's not important. But, w very important part of this build is spreading your creep because you always want to have as much vision as possible and you need that area to place your spine crawlers and this kind of leads me into what I'm going to be doing. I'm going to be showing you the infester spine crawler defense and I think that's a very strong build to do. This is a build you can only really execute on Cloud Kingdom, Entombed Valley, and to a lesser extent Ohana but at the same time those are maps where the Roachling, like the ground based defense of Immortal Sentry is stronger at the same time, so you can execute that a little bit easier. So, I mean, it's a trade-off. Yeah. Alright, so at this point, I see he's continuing to make sentries. I have links to the third, uh, so he's not going for a very quick third. And at this point, just getting my lair, I'm continuing to drone up, because it doesn't matter. I'm going to want to have the drones either way. I see he's still upgrading. He hasn't tried to take a third yet. If he hasn't tried to take a third by about nine minutes, it's probably going to at least be some Immortal Sentry pressure anywhere up to an all-in. And the earliest it could hit is about 10 minutes, so I want to have make sure my spine crawlers are made by that point. A good time to make your spine crawlers is right before your lair finishes up. And your lair should be starting by about 7.38 minutes in this case. I skipped the Roach Warren because I know I'm going for this specific type of defense. And if, like, let's say he doesn't go for an attack and he goes for a third base, then I already have 70 drones in the field even after making these spine crawlers. So that's the beauty of this sort of defense on this map. So right now he's obviously going for the all-in. I'm actually able to take out the probe, which is nice, I believe. Uh, wait, maybe not. Oh yeah, actually, that's pretty helpful. I see as a I ha he has an observer, which means his uh, mortals are going to be a little bit later. But right now, very important to note, since I get my lair up. I am able to drop creep at his third, which denies his third for even longer, so I can invest in more spine crawlers at each of my choke points. 
Alright. Well, now at this point, I'm oversaturated at this base, and of course, that is mildly intentional because I always want to be able to make more spine crawlers at a snap point. And I've confirmed this is the mortal sentry all in. He's going all out. I have the spines up. Right now, I got my lair a little bit late this game. Usually you want to have your pathing lands about done by 11 minutes. Of course, I messed that up, but I can make up for it with the spine crawler count. This spine crawler count will be able to hold against the first wave of warpins. Uh, he's bringing up his stalkers now, but I believe I hold until... Until, at least. Like, right now, he's not dealing with this. He has to wait for more weapons. Just seeing these spine crawlers means he won't go for the attack. I bring some spines up to defend, just to be sure, and now I have eight infestors. I make a pretty big mistake this game, and not... Well, I just want to say, when you're doing this defense, the spine crawlers, you need to be active moving them. Right now, upon... I should have vision of wherever he's moving. I should always have a zergling moving around, just checking where he is, because I have how many spine crawlers over here? 20 spine crawlers. Those are pretty useful. Over here, I have eight more of them with eight infestors on the way. Eight infestors will buy enough time for me to move spine crawlers, and that's why creep spread is so important. Uh, I should be hot keying these spine crawlers, and that's the mistake I make. This thing, this is why I lose this game. But right now, let's just imagine I have ten more spine crawlers right here with ten infestors and more on the way. There is no way he's coming up this ramp, and I still have 60 drones, and he does not have a third base. So all I need to do is continually make infestors, continually make zerglings and spine crawlers, actually mostly spine crawlers, in order to do that. And he's pretty smart using the warp prism to warp up here. I don't kill the warp prism. And my fungals are a little bit off. I don't kill the sentries, but pretty much what you're looking to do with this build, keep them locked down with fungals, and remember we're pretending that I have at least five or six of these spine crawlers here and I fungled all the sentries to death so right now it just came down to he made a smart move with the warp prism he was able to take me out but the build was there I had the infestor count I let him come up the ramp I missed a couple fungals it really takes a lot of practice with the timing making sure you move your spines because spines because you can't really hotkey them very efficiently you gotta be quick you gotta keep vision of his army but right now uh, just some important timings against this the quickest an immortal sentry can move out about 9.30 uh, you want to have your lair finished. Uh, well, you want to have your pathogen lands finished by about 11 minutes with 8 to 10 investors coming out with 20 to 25 spine crawlers on the field total. So, those are just the timings you're looking for when you're going 3 hatch against the Immortal Sentry on Cloud Kingdom and Tomb Valley and to a lesser extent, uh, Ohana. Alright. That will cover that. <laughs> Such a pretty terrible song. Alright, now we're going to look at a Phoenix opener on Ohana. Ohana is a pretty is one of those maps with the rocks, kind of like in Team Valley, where it's tough to uh, open up 3 hatch against early pressure. Of course, it's up against a Phoenix build, but that's the same where the Queens take a lot longer to move back and forth. So we're just going to go straight to the point where we have our infrastructure up and where he's starting to go for his tech. Alright, yeah, there's nothing, uh, there's no huge tells that he's going Stargate in this game, It's except one. The one that really kind of gives away he's going Stargate, even before I sacrifice my Overlord, I poke my Ling up, I poke my Ling up several times, the first time being a couple seconds ago, and if he isn't upgrading plus one by about six minutes and thirty seconds, it's almost always some other sort of tech build. Whether it be Stargate, whether it be DTs, sometimes double Stargate, and... The kind of giveaway here, he's not taking two gases at his natural. So if he isn't taking two gases at his natural by six minutes and 30 seconds, and he isn't upgrading plus one, you're almost always looking at either one, a very quick third, like a third based on cannon defense as opposed to sentries, or a Stargate build. And in this case, it does, it is confirmed by my Sacrificial Overlord that is a Stargate build, but I really like Phoenix Openers as well, just a sidebar as Protoss. Pretty much what you're looking to do, as soon as you see this phoenix, keep the queen count up. I'm already up to four queens here, because I've scouted he doesn't have the plus one. Uh, and then just keep the drone count going. Otherwise, just a standard opener. You want to get your lair as quickly as possible. I do actually macro pretty terribly. And another important part is to keep checking for the lair. 
I mean, checking for the third. If he takes a third at about nine minutes, which some play Protoss players are liable to do, not always on this map, then you want to make sure you know as soon as that's going down. If he's taking a third very early, one, you could possibly punish it with a roach warren and using just roaches and speedlings in order to take it out because one thing Stargate suffers from is a lack of actual units, especially when you're going for the Phoenix, which means you don't actually have enough lifts to deal with that amount of speedlings. So that's why a lot of Protoss players are favoring going for the Robo and then starting to get their Colossus tech out as they go for the third base. But what you want to do is constantly scouting for that third base. I keep I can really push out the creep spread because, one, he's not going to have the units to really push it back. He's not going to have the observer to push it back very early, and I'm going to have the queen count to deal with that. Uh, I, I like to really minimize my spine crawlers and, of course, never make a hydra den unless it's very clear he's going for double stargate and I'm really desperate and I don't scout it until later. Hydra den is kind of a stopgap measure. A hydra den really opens you up for a lot of timings. And I've never really seen any Zerg players really successfully utilize a Hydra 10 because of the way Protoss players play it out. Just getting that Robo facility, uh, and he should be getting the Robo Bay very soon. I don't know if he gets it before his third, but at this point I have Zerg lanes at his third. So I know right now, okay, he's not taking a third base. Uh, that means he's most likely teching the Robo because I haven't really seen anything other than a handful of Phoenixes right now. Uh, and since I haven't seen that, that means he's probably going to Colossus. And two, uh, even if he isn't going to Colossus, even if he's going for like Blink or he's going for just a very late third, Hydras are not going to be what I want to use to punish it. Hydras are something you use to punish. Like if you scout double Stargate right as it's starting and you already have your lair on the way, maybe you can try to do a Hydra timing. But still, I'm not a huge fan of it. I'd rather just drone up and get my Infestation Pit tech out. But right now, I'm just kind of looking for the third, uh, trying to poke in. I should be making an Overseer to poke in and see if there's a Robo Bay. Yeah, there's the Robo Bay finishing up around 10 minutes. His first class, I will be out. How many workers? He's killed about four workers. That's not too bad. And I've droned up to about 60. I'm going to be looking to get maybe 70, 75 drones off three bases. Then getting a fourth, going for Infestation Pit Gek, and then getting a Spire a little bit before my Hive. But right now... At this point, I see this Zealot count. It's pretty obvious he's going for something gas-intensive. And even though I haven't seen the Robo Bay, I can kind of intuit it. So, uh, I see he's got a late third. So that means I just want to drone up. I'm making some speedlings just in case he's going for a heavy gateway attack behind it or something on those lines. But right now, what I'm looking to do is get my Infestors out, get a fourth base, go for my Spire attack, go for my Hive, maybe around... 12, 12, 30, uh, possibly 13 minutes, depending on what kind of tech I scout. And then from there, just kind of playing in a, a standard Infestor Broodar composition. If I catch all those mutas with Infestors, I might think about making a big swell mutas, especially since I see this Zealot count, which is kind of ridiculous. It's like, okay, you obviously have no stalkers. But while the Phoenixes are still on the field, it's kind of risky going for mutas at any point because they'll already have that Stargate ready to go. But, I mean, that's kind of how you transition out of Phoenix, uh, Phoenix harassment, especially when he's gotten his third that late, which most Protoss players will do, especially on a map like Ohana. Alright. And finally, I had him do a 7-gate plus 1 attack to me on Entomb Valley. And I'm just going to go over how to scout for it. I actually lose this game. <laughs> Because this is a very good map to do gateway all-ins, just because of the way the rocks work. And I mess up my timings a little bit, but I'll go over that on Entomb Valley. Alright. He just scouts in with a probe, and since it's he could scout two different locations, then it's not a weird probe timing. I still can't be sure if he's going for a gate first or not. I get my lanes out, scout around. Completely standard stuff that we've seen so far several times today. So... What I'm really doing, I come up and I scout for the plus one, and I see it. Wait, have I seen it? I believe I've seen it. I remember seeing it in this game. But yeah. Alright, we're working on the assumption my Link got up and saw the plus one, because I remember seeing it in this game. And if a plus one has started by about six minutes, that means it's at the same time as the Cyber Core, and that really opens up for a gateway time, and you can't be sure yet. But it's really opening yourself up. And another thing you can do on this map uh, is get your Overlord in position over here to see if he's making any tech on this side of the base. And he kind of chooses to make his gateways here. So I kind of get a little bit of a jump. And this is the mistake I make in this game. 
I have no gas geysers at 6 minutes and 30 seconds where I'm going up to like 30 drones. I'm really going to want to have those gas geysers by 6.30, especially against this gateway attack. So I get my roach one early, but the gas is late. So that kind of transition itself. But right now, with my lings, if you see plus one being researched as the cyber course finishes, this many gateways, of course, since I saw those first gateways, I kind of moved the Overlord in because I was like, okay, I've already seen his tech, but if you see plus one researching that early, you probably want to move your Overlord in a little bit earlier, maybe around 645 or so, because he's probably going to move his first units across the map with that plus one if he wants to do pressure. And another thing I see, Chrono Boost. He has not used much of his Chrono Boost at all, which means he really wants to get those warp ins going as quickly as possible. I haven't seen the probe. The probe is kind of a dead giveaway of what he's up to. But if you get a glimpse of that probe moving out with a Zealot Stalker and a plus one, as well as no gas geysers by about the seven minute mark, it's kind of obvious what's coming at you. So at that point, I'm making spine crawlers at both locations because these rocks in the way. He could easily attack up in either location. I'm making overseers, overlords. And since my gas geysers are late, I can't actually make roaches early, which is what ends up being my downfall. But what you want to do is make as many roaches as you can at this hatchery, at the third base hatchery. If you're looking at the third base hatchery, that's usually location that's going to be assaulted first. So you want your units to be rallying out from there. You don't want them going all the way around here, getting picked off by stalkers as they try to come up the ramp. So anything you can do at this hatchery is really where you want to make it. If you hotkey it separately, if that's your thing, usually I just use my camera locations to move to it. But right now, we've determined it's a plus one attack, so we're in full unit production mode. Sure, I only have 30 drones because that's how plus one attacks work, but if you crush this attack, then you're very free once you start crushing the attack, you're free to drone. But at this point, I kind of make a mistake. I can't have the unit count out early, and I kind of make some spine crawlers. So I don't hold it as well as I could. But right now, I'm just kind of explaining what I'm doing and why. I have this many lings out early. I'm using them to kind of keep the stalkers back. If I can keep the stalkers back, then my roaches and my queens can go to work. But since I don't really have the roach count, he's free to make zealots. I mean, he's free to make stalkers, especially since my speed is a little bit late. What you should be looking to do is get your gas geysers at about 6.15 and get speed while you're upping your roach count. I was forced to make roaches early, so my roach count was very low. So here, I'm trying to get my lings in a position where they can deal with the stalkers on their own because they evaporate to those plus one zealots. But when you see the plus one, you want to be as cost efficient as possible. And in this case, I was not. But uh, some things to do. Gas geysers a little bit earlier. Uh, make roaches at that third base location. Uh, get zergling speed out as soon as possible while you still make a few roaches at a time at least. You want to have at least maybe five or six roaches before getting zergling speed if possible. Especially if you can make them at that third base. Uh, in order to really slap down the first, because the first warp in will almost always be zealots in order to tank a lot of damage, and then the warp in stalkers behind. So if you're able to shut down the zealot wave, you can just make lings behind it, assuming you maintain your roach count. And those lings, if you can get that speed out quicker, will be a lot more effective. So that's pretty much what you want to do in a situation where they're going for a heavy gateway island. It takes a lot of practice, it takes a lot of timing, and of course, you can still be very vulnerable because you see up on the screen right now. It's not looking good for me, but, <laughs> yeah. That's just, if you can get those timings down, if you look back to earlier in the video where I did just the straight up timing, that's kind of what you're looking for. It's the most robust build. If you can get the spine crawlers up and you can get a roach count, then you should be able to push it back. Of course, uh, if you do want to hotkey your roaches and lings separately, so you have your lings attacking the stalkers while your roaches are attacking the zealots, uh, because if the lings are attacking the zealots, they will evaporate. And that's pretty much what the ideal situation against a plus one. And Giant Smurf was able to take me out there. Um, I'm going to see if he wants to come on Skype, if he's free for the moment. Uh, free in the nuts minute or two. If not, uh, I'm just going to kind of wrap it up. Just going to summarize the build one more time. And then I'm going to take the stream offline. Uh, of course, I was doing this live on my stream. While, while I'm just talking with him, I'm going to... Well, I mean, that'll kind of wrap it up for now. If you enjoyed the video, I know I... It's the first time I'm doing this type of thing. Um, I know I could... I have a lot to improve on right now. I think I covered all the bases. I don't really know if I want to go further in depth with the builds or just kind of be a little bit more cursory with them and then in, in depth later. 
but uh I don't know. Leave your comments on the YouTube video. Tweet me them. Tweet me at Winter Starcraft. Will be uh, my Twitter for the near future. Uh, YouTube is youtubecom slash Starcraft. That's where this video will be uploaded in the very near future. I think I'm gonna upload it, make a generic Reddit post about it because that's what I do, and uh, then bring the stream back online. Do random with commentary. After that, I know. Uh, I'm, I'm not really happy with how this played out. I don't think I explained it as well as I could have. But if you liked it, if you if there are things you want to see me change, I'm just willing to keep improving it. If there's a build you want to see, uh, then make sure you suggest it either in the YouTube comments, suggest it on Twitter, suggest it on my Facebook. And just a side note, I'll be doing free coaching giveaways. Uh, when I get 100 Twitter followers, I get 50 Facebook likes, uh, both of which I will be doing picking from the Twitter followers once I get a hundred for an hour of free coaching I'll be taking from my Facebook likers for an hour of free uh, coaching as well and those will be streamed um, so that's what you're going to be looking at in the near future right now I'm just going to wrap it up we're going to go over the build one last time just very quickly rapid fire 15 pool 15 hatch 15 queen overlord before the queen on 15 two sets of links up to 19 supply rally out a drone after you make the sets of links to take your third base in about four minutes 15 seconds from there make a queen at your natural get the creep tumor move it down to the third base put a creep tumor there as you make a queen at your natural and your third the first overlord should be in his base by that point scouting is plus one timing if he has plus one before six minutes then you're looking at maybe a gateway timing if he doesn't have plus one he delays it a little bit and he gets his gas gadgets before seven well 630 or so maybe looking at a mortal century sacrifice an overlord between 6.30 and 7 minutes uh, to go see what he's doing. If he isn't researching plus one before 7 minutes, it's most likely DTs, possibly Blink Stalkers, maybe not, or Robotech, well not Robotech, or Stargate. If he gets two Gas Geysers before 6.30, isn't researching plus one, it's almost always DTs or Jewel Star. If he takes an expansion at his third before 9 minutes, but he already has a robo, it's probably expansion build. If he takes an expansion by about 10 minutes and he has a robo and a lot of gateways, it might be an all-in and it might be a fake. Um, make sure you get your gas geysers by about 6.15, Roachworn by about 6.40, Evil Chamber by 7 minutes, Lair by 7.30 to 8 minutes, uh, Speed a little bit after your Lair as soon as you get 100 gas, and then from there, just kind of use your Overlords. Make sure you're always looking at what he's doing. Try to shut down Proxy Pylons. Spread your creep out as far as you can, and from there, you're going to be transitioning into whatever you scout as a reaction to him, and watch my stream to see me play ZVP. That pretty much covers quick 3 hatch and ZVP. Uh, if you have any questions, comments, criticisms, make sure to leave them in the YouTube comments. I'm just going to cut it off right here. Thanks for watching my first build order video. I have been Winter Starcraft, and that's going to do it. Good luck, have fun, and have fun executing the quick three hatch. And now I'm going to take the stream offline for a second, and I'm going to upload the video, and I'm going to put the stream back up while I'm doing all that. And 